Hi all. In this video, we are going to see about fate of hemoglobin. Now, this is important because this is the basis of classification of jaundice, which is a very important topic. So, let's see what happens to hemoglobin and how bilirubin is formed. Okay. So, we know, so we know that hemoglobin breakdown occurs when the RBCs are old and they are engulfed by the macrophages. So, hemoglobin consists of, of course, it's got a heme part and a globin part. So first we will see what happens to this globin part. The globin part is broken down into amino acids and it is recycled for protein synthesis. So basically we know that globin is protein chains. So they will be broken down into amino acids and they will be recycled for protein synthesis. Now what happens to the heme part? So we know that heme consists of an iron part as well as a porphyrin ring. The iron part is transported by transferrin. So once heme is broken down, the iron will be released and that will be transported by transferrin to bone marrow so that it can be used for erythropoiesis and to the liver where it can be stored in the form of ferritin or hemocytrin. And what will happen to the protoporphyrin part? That will be converted to biliverdin by the enzyme heme oxygenase which in turn will further be converted to bilirubin by the enzyme called biliverdin reductase. So this is what I am going to explain in a nutshell and this is a very important flowchart. So of this I think the most important part is what happens to this protoporphyrin ring because that is what which is going to form this bilirubin. Okay. So this is the structure of heme. We know that RBCs contain heme as well as globin. So, uh, the heme part contains iron and a protoporphyrin ring. Now, this when it is acted upon by an enzyme called heme oxygenase, it gets converted to a compound called biliverdin. So, basically you can see that it has just released this iron and broken that ring. So, that is why we have got a straight structure like this. So, this is called biliverdin. And then further this biliverdin will be acted upon by another enzyme called biliverdin reductase. So, by this reduction, this will be converted to another compound which is bilirubin. Okay. So, thus after the after this breaking of hemo, hemoglobin, basically we have got bilirubin. Now, what happens to this bilirubin? We will see. So, bilirubin will be transported inside the blood with the help of a protein called albumin. So, bilirubin can be transported in the blood only with the help of albumin. And like that, after traveling like that, they reach the liver. Now, inside the liver, the rest of the sets, uh, steps take place. So, for example, if this is the hepatocyte, which is a liver cell. So, this complex, bilirubin albumin complex will be pumped into the hepatocyte, wherein it will be conjugated. So, for conjugation, basically means it is going to combine with another compound called glucouronic acid. So, this occurs with the help of the enzyme UDP glucuronyl transferase, UDP glucuronyl transferase. This causes conversion of bilirubin to bilirubin monoglucuronide, bilirubin monoglucuronide. This again gets, uh, again conjugates with one more molecule to form bilirubin diglucuronide, bilirubin diglucuronide. So, this step is called conjugation and this occurs in the liver. So, bilirubin and albumin was flowing through the blood. It reaches the hepatocyte wherein it is pumped into the hepatocyte and conjugated with the help of glucuronic acid and this enzyme UDP glucuronyl transferase and it is converted to bilirubin diglucuronide. Now this bilirubin diglucuronide which is the otherwise the conjugated bilirubin gets pumped into this hole here. What is, what is this hole here? It is the biliary canaliculus okay? which means the hepatocyte will secrete this conjugated bilirubin into the bile. So, thus you can see that this is the bile here. No? So, the liver is secreting it along with the bile into the biliary system. So, now we have got all the conjugated bilirubin inside the bile. Then what happens? Then this through this bile it reaches the intestine. So, now the conjugated bilirubin all is present in the intestine. Now, we will see what happens in the intestine. So, in the intestine, so suppose this is the intestinal wall. So, here, here we have got the bilirubin, conjugated bilirubin. That will be acted upon by the bacteria that is present inside the intestine. And that will convert this bilirubin into urobilinogen. It will convert bilirubin into urobilinogen. Now, this urobilinogen can take any of the three tracks. Either it can be taken back via the portal circulation, which is called the enterohepatic circulation, 
or it can be uh, taken by the kidney where it is secreted as urobilin so some of the uh, urobilinogen will enter the kidney and there it is excreted by a urine as urobilin the rest of it goes as stercobilin wherein by wherein it is excreted by the feces so urobilinogen is found when bacteria acts on conjugated bilirubin and then it can take either of the three routes it can uh, go to the portal circulation that is enterohepatic circulation it can be excreted as sterco stercobilin or it can be taken back into the kidneys as urobilin okay so this is what happens to this bilirubin or, or this this is the bilirubin metabolism so again i'll just show a flow chart to depict this so bilirubin is transported to the liver bound to albumin and that is called unconjugated bilirubin or indirect bilirubin this bilirubin that is uh, uh, getting transported in the blood in contact with albumin that is called unconjugated bilirubin because it is not yet conjugated and then this unconjugated bilirubin gets conjugated with glu glucuronic acid by udp glucuronal transferase in the liver so now it has become this conjugated bilirubin then what happens Conjugated bilirubin is ex excreted into bile and enters the intestine. In the intestine, it gets converted to urobilinogen by the gut bacteria, where, and then it can have three routes: either it will be reabsorbed and excreted as urobilin by the kidneys. So that is why our urine has got that yellow color. It's the color of urobilin. Or it can be converted to stercobilin and excreted in the feces. That is why it, it uh, the feces is a brown color. or else it can be reabsorbed back into the portal circulation which is the enterohepatic circulation so this is the flow chart showing how the bilirubin is excreted out of the body okay so now just i would like to mention what enterohepatic circulation is so basically we hear this for bile salts for, for, but for urobilinogen also there is enterohepatic circulation is basically the same thing see the bile is being excreted into the intestine but from the intestine some is taken back into the portal system back into the liver so it is basically a loop consisting of secretion by the liver reabsorption by the intestine and return to the liver by the portal blood for repeat excretion into the bile so this loop is called enterohepatic circulation so now we'll see an applied aspect of this fate of hemoglobin which is physiological jaundice what is physiological jaundice it is the yellowish discoloration of skin and mucous membrane occurring in newborns typically within 2 to 3 days after birth which usually resolves in 2 weeks see basically when a baby is born initially there will not be any jaundice but after 2 to 3 days the baby will show some yellowish discoloration that is normal and that is called physiological jaundice okay and usually it will uh, disappear within around 2 weeks so you don't have to be worried about physiological jaundice because it usually resolves in 2 weeks so now why does these babies have this physiological jaundice we'll just say the causes so they basically there are two causes why there is jaundice in newborns the first point is that babies have got increased rbc count because they've got slight amount of hypoxia it stimulates erythropoiesis which in turn causes an increased rbc count because of this rbc increased rbc count after birth there will be increased destruction of rbc so there will be elevated serum bilirubin because if there is more uh, destruction of rbc there will be increased uh, bilirubin serum bilirubin level which in turn will result in jaundice now the second reason is there is a delayed liver function see after birth actually the baby the baby's liver is just maturing so the liver takes time to fully take over the bilirubin conjugation excretion all through by so because of the immaturity of the liver it will take some time to uh, you know to, uh, conjugate this whole bilirubin that is reaching it so thus you will have this uh, because of this you can have this physiological jaundice so and this delay is particularly seen in premature babies because of hepatic immaturity that is why in premature babies you can get this uh, you, you usually see this jaundice very often okay so that is these are the two causes of physiological jaundice one first of all they've got increased rbc count so naturally there will be more rbc destruction secondly they've got a delayed liver function so that is why we have physiological jaundice in newborns so how do we treat them we treat them by phototherapy so how can phototherapy treat this jaundice see that is because when light is shown bilirubin with the help of phototherapy by photo isomerization it basically bilirubin gets isomerized when it is um, kept under phototherapy and thus it forms another substance called lumirubin which is water soluble and thus it can be excreted by uh, via by 
because it's in the water soluble form so basically bilirubin is converted to lumirubin during phototherapy which can be excreted with via bile without any need for conjugation so that is how we use phototherapy for the treatment of physiological jaundice now for some quick additional scoring points see we said that during uh, the bilirubin metabolism we said this bilirubin and albumin complex is taken into the hepatocyte via pump no do you want to know the name of that pump it is called organic anion transporting polypeptide oatp organic anion transporting polypeptide so those who are interested can learn that i won't say it's a must know point but it's a good to know point and then we said that after this uh, bilirubin gets conjugated and all it forms this bilirubin diglucuronide and then it's going to be taken up into the or excreted into the bile canaliculus so here also we've got a pump and that is called multi drug resistant protein 2 multi drug resistant protein 2 so why are we studying all this because whenever there is an issue with these pumps you can have different diseases which will cause jaundice so thus in this video we've seen about the basic uh, metabolism of hemoglobin what happens to hemoglobin and uh, how it forms bilirubin what happens to the bilirubin and its metabolism and then we've seen about physiological jaundice and some addition scoring points so i hope this video was useful for you thank you